Getting teenagers to talk is tough sometimes. Oh yeah, they talk. But getting them to talk to adults is the rough part. It's amazing, right? You take them in your car to meet their friends and you ask them, how was your day? Fine. What was the most interesting thing that happened today? I don't know. I like to throw in a, would you like a million dollars? Usually get a, I guess. As soon as you see the little in-car introverts meet their friends, though, it's like, oh, you'd never believe what Becky said today. Or, I was so mad, and then I listened to this song, and I was like, oh my gosh, Ariana really just gets me. From your conversation, you thought they might have been getting up verbal communication for Lint, and now it's like they have mouth diarrhea. Too far? There are all kinds of reasons why your teenagers talk to other people and not to you. And today I brought you an interview with somebody who has spent his life talking to teenagers just like me, as a speaker, a youth worker, and a lot of other settings. This is my interview with Robbie Quick. All right, so here we are. Uh, this is Robbie Quick. Robbie, you've been working with teenagers since you were a, a teenager. teenager. Yeah. yeah. Funny enough, that's true. <laughs> it's been around a while. So it's crazy. Um, you know, uh, in your experience of working with teenagers mm -hmm. after all these years, you've probably learned some things. And one of the things that I found is that teenagers, sometimes when you're not their parents, they'll tell you things oh, that yeah. they oh, would yeah. not tell their parents. For sure, for sure. Um, so what is something that you think is the biggest misconception about teenagers? Biggest misconception about teenagers. Um, I think sometimes uh, one of them is we forget that we were teenagers. And I think that's the biggest way we can actually help teenagers is by remember we were them. What did we think? How did we feel? I know it's going to sound crazy, but when I was 20, I thought I had it all figured out. I did. I thought I was like, dude, I got this, man. College is almost done. Like, I'm feeling good. And then when I was 30, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't think I had a clue what I was doing when I was 20. And I really thought I did, but I didn't. And then I'm almost 40 and I'm looking at my 30s and I'm thinking, I hope 50, it ends. Yeah. <laughs> I hope at 50, I'm like, you know what? I did know what I was doing when I was yeah. 40. Because, But with that, when you can remember that, you realize they are living their life. Um, they are feeling their feelings, their emotions. They're grown-ups. No, he's a 13-year-old kid. He's a 14, 15. He doesn't know. No, man. Like, it's over. You already raised them. They're living their life now. <laughs> and so you have to adapt and figure out where you're at and move forward. Because the kids, they're, they're ready to be uh, put into serving and giving and put into action and doing things, making a difference. They don't quite know how. They think they do. But they need us to, instead of, if you really have to figure out that transition of you're not a parent anymore. Yes, you are. But how do you transition where you have to guide them, make sure they don't do things that are wrong, but also like start bridging this thing called friendship. Yeah, right. We're friends because we have to, we get to choose if we want to be friends or not. But when it's your kids, it's like looking down. And I, I can vividly remember this experience with my parents where it's like, man, they just think I'm a kid. Right. And the older I get, the more I realize, majority of the time, they were right. <laughs> right. But there was little things here and there that if they could have just said, hold on, man, how do I, while staying in this context of, context of being a parent, do I see that they're regular human, they're grown up, they're making their own decisions, they want to change the world, and how do I meet them there and not just kind of like, just do what you're supposed to do, and right. don't get arrested, and show up on time. And, ah. Right, because you know they don't know everything that they think they know, but... You can't convince they them of that. No. So you have to talk to them. You didn't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And you forget that. Right. I forgot that. And so even looking at the teenagers I work with and even my kids who are slowly hitting that, and yours already are. Yeah. You're saying it's not that useful to say you have no idea what you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. So what do you think people would be surprised to know about teenagers and what they're going through today? Yeah, I think one, um, they, a couple things. They're just like you, just younger and not as damaged, yeah, right. <laughs> but they're damaged. Yeah. You know, they've been through enough life too and they're living their own real life and it's real. And the same way that your life is all about you, and I'm not saying that's a horrible thing, can be and might need to be looked at, but their life is about them even more so. They haven't been through enough things. Some of them have. But majority right. of them haven't been through enough and come out the other side to realize that life isn't just about them. And so some ways we forget that. And that becomes super, super discouraging, frustrating, 
can make us ugh, lose our minds. And then we attack it from that place instead of being able to come from back here going, okay, what they're saying is not what they're saying. Right. What they're saying is something else. What they're saying is not what they're saying. What they're saying is something else. And if you could have enough space, and I don't know how many questions you're going to ask me, but this might come back a million times. We don't have much space for ourselves. What are you talking about space, Robbie? I got space. I got a 3,600 square foot house. No, I'm talking about in our own life. To, that breathing place, that space around us where we're not just flying by the seat of our pants, busy, worried about bills, worried about life, worried about those very kids we're trying to yeah, figure out right yeah, now. Right. And there's not enough space. And when there's not enough space, then you're rushing and you're moving and you're trampling and you're not seeing and you're missing and you're not thinking about or experiencing what they're going through. When you can allow space, it can actually give you that ability to... What do they say from that movie? Goose Fraba or Woosa? What is it? Yeah. Woosa. It's kind of your own, you know, not to get all weird, but it's your own version of going, where are they at right now? Because they're living their own life and they're experiencing it for real. And sometimes we don't have the space or the time. Time's a good word yeah. for space. Yeah. Just enough time to actually go, what are you going through? See them. They're just like you were in that age. Think about when you were that age, what you wish someone would have done to see you, to understand what you're going through, to realize you were real and had real feelings and were going through life the same way that they are, that we are, and go, how do I create space for you? Because we're all in this thing together. Right now, right? We're all stuck at home. So if you have teenagers or kids, I got two kids, 10 and 7, you have teenagers. Yeah. If you have teenagers, you are at home and you are stuck with them. If you don't have space, oh, you are miserable, my friend. You're miserable right now. I've had my miserable moments. Yeah, I, I've had. I, sorry. I just very, before this, I walked into my teenage daughter was in a, a dark room by herself, and I walked in and I <laughs> talked to her for a second. And she was cordial, and then when I walked out. I left the door open. And I heard behind me, and it closed again. You and I, we've had a lot of conversations with teenagers, and I'm interested in your perspective. What do you think that teenagers wish their parents knew, but they just don't know how to tell them? What do teenagers wish their parents knew, but they don't know how to tell them? Oh, man, I'm learning, too. And this might be a little off the beaten path, but sometimes they don't even know. Right. <laughs> they don't know what they wish, they, they what don't, they need. They don't know why they're mad. They, they don't. don't know. They don't. <laughs> yeah. We don't either right. a lot of times. Right. And so and then we expect them to, and we haven't even figured it out. And so for that, again, I go back to this idea of giving them space to understand they are where they're at, you are where you're at. You know, again, it's never about what's actually they think it's about or they're saying it's about. And to have that space to allow you to go in there and really have dialogue and conversation. For some of us, we have to really figure out how to walk this line of parental transition into friendship. Yeah. You're never going to stop worrying about them. You're never going to stop caring about them. You're never going to get a phone call at two in the morning and not go, oh my God, my baby, right, <laughs> you know, right. my mom probably does that now, yeah, yeah. you know, like, oh no, my baby and his babies, you know, or which one of them is it? And so with that though, there's got to be a transition. And I saw it in my relationship with my own parents. And as I, as a youth work, work with, with thousands of students, I've seen it with them is the parents don't know how to find that transition and walk that line to go, at some point, I'm going to have to let you go. Ready or not, right. willing or not, like they're going to go and spread their wings and fly. Now is where you need to see, oh, I got to start get, letting them make their own decisions. Really let them fail. Really let them recover from that failure. Really give them space. You see a theme in my answers? but Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it, we don't have any. We don't have it since kindergarten. Get up, six o'clock, gotta make breakfast, gotta go, gotta do this, gotta move, gotta... There's no space. How do you make space to be able to let them be who they are and actually develop into the young man or woman that they are? And we have to give them that space and go, man, I have to start seeing you as this. It's weird, because there are people, yeah. you know? You're well, seeing that now a little more. And, yeah, and it, it's one of those weird things because you're talking about transitioning to friendship, but you're not talking about transitioning to kind of friendship where it's like, look, I'm on TikTok. Yeah, well, yeah, bro. Well, sometimes I see a lot of parents now, they're on TikTok, you know? And I'm not mad at them. It's I'm not mad you, at them. If you are, that, that's a little lame. If you have, well, I, I disagree. I disagree. If you are, if you actually have the rhythm, listen to them saying right foot up, left foot slide. If you can get it, get it. Because you know what? You'll connect with them. But if you don't want to, I fully get that too. Yeah. Find something though. Right, right. Because right. we're talking tongue-in-cheek, but Jeff, you connect with your kids somewhere. Yeah. You find right. that meeting ground. If it's TikTok, it's TikTok. I don't recommend it for most of you. 
<laughs> but if it is, it is. You know what if I mean? If you don't Finding know what TikTok connection. is, it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually a clock that's really popular with the kids right now. Uh. <laughs> yes, but really though, Finding that transition line, yeah, at some point it's like, no, go to your room, this is what's going on, or whatever, you know, I'm not trying to get the details of the discipline, but like, the reality of, when they're 25 getting married, you want to be sitting there going, I'm proud of you, I'm happy for you, I'm crying because I'm sad and I'm happy, but like, oh my gosh, we're becoming more than just, I'm your mom, you do what I say, and now, you can start developing what that dialogue looks like, what that relationship looks like. You know, anyway, I've seen relationships with parents and students where they don't have them anymore. Because the kid's like, dude, I can't. Like, every time you're there, it's this, we're not friends. It's this, tell me. And you've got to bridge that gap and figure it out, or you're going to lose them. Okay. All right, listen. Hey, I hope this was helpful today. I really liked what Robbie had to say about giving teenagers space, because I think that that is really important. Listen, you can go to studentreach.org forward slash you coach and get all kinds of notes, sign up for our emailing list. And hey, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel? You're already here, so just do it. All right, listen, I know you can be more awesome than you already are.